Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Original Book of Witchcraft The original book on witchcraft delves into all kinds of dark arts, magic, and theories of doom. This ancient book is currently housed at the Library of Congress. It's called The Discovery of Witchcraft, written in 1584 by Reginald Scott. The book was so shocking when it came out that it outraged King James I because it was so heretical. And yet this book on witchcraft, which was published originally in English, became influential in the coming years when it came to practicing magic. Shakespeare researched this very book for the scenes he used with witches in Macbeth. Stage magicians have plagiarized and consulted the publication for hundreds of years. And today, its dark secrets have been transferred to the internet for the world to see. The book was groundbreaking for its time as an encyclopedia on magic and spells, and also juggling. The author consulted dozens of previous grimoires, or books on science, tales of the occult, and everything he could get his hands on to create the most impressive compendium of the day. But here's where things get interesting. Reginald Scott described witches not as evil, but as very capable women who practiced folk healing and sleight of hand. He also claimed that their miraculous feats weren't wicked at all, describing a witch not as a consort of the devil, but as a wise woman. But his book went on to be plagiarized and twisted in such a way that the original message was lost, and within just a few years, witches were regarded as evil once again, and people were using the spells in the book for all kinds of shenanigans. Number 9. The Codex Higas The Codex Higas is also known as the Devil's Bible. It's a huge book, mysterious, ominous, and a little bit creepy. It is in fact the largest medieval manuscript ever written, believed to have been made by a single monk living in Bohemia, in what is today modern Czech Republic. It has 620 pages, it's about 3 feet tall, and there is a devil hiding inside of it. The book was written in the 13th century and stored in a Benedictine monastery. The unnamed monk who wrote it included the New Testament and the Old Testament, as well as other more curious texts. Things like exorcisms, medical practices, and even proper grammar rules. Everything in this book is handwritten, and given its large size, experts say it probably took the scribe about 10 years to finish. Although nobody knows for sure, it could have taken him up to three decades. The Codex Higas, which literally means giant book, is simple enough to understand as a medieval translation of the Bible, thrown in with some other random information the monk probably thought would be useful. But the mystery comes in the fact that there is a random page in the middle of the book, with absolutely no explanation, showing the Dark Lord of Hell. There is a fully colored rendering of Satan, seemingly for no reason. The picture takes up an entire page, and probably took the scribe weeks to fully color. And yet there is no explanation for why the scribe went through all of the trouble of creating his own devil. The legend goes that the monk was sentenced to death unless he could make this amazing book, but there was no way he would have time to finish it, so he sold his soul to the devil in exchange for his help. Do you believe this story? Let me know in the comments below! Number 8. The Book of Forbidden Knowledge when it comes to forbidden history, no book is quite as forbidden as a piece of work literally called the Book of Forbidden Knowledge. It was put together towards the end of the 1800s by a mysterious individual, or maybe even a group of people. The book contains various manuscripts that were all written in the 1800s, all pertaining to different aspects of the occult. And this means mesmerism, black magic, talismans, ceremonial magic, demonology, fortune telling, and even folk healing. It's less of a book and more of a modern grimoire filled with all the forbidden knowledge of the Victorian and Edwardian periods. It's not that ancient, only dating back to when the first edition was published in 1910, but there really is no legitimate book out there that contains as much raw information about the forbidden arts than this particular collected tome. Plus, you can actually buy a copy from pretty much any online bookstore and teach yourself all the forbidden knowledge your heart desires. Number 7. The Necronomicon Is the Necronomicon even real? And for that matter, what is it? It's become a symbol of dark magic and insanity in popular culture, showing up in horror books and most famously in the Evil Dead series of movies, 
in which the book is used to summon demons. But is the movie book based on something real, or is it all just theater? The Necronomicon is allegedly bound in human flesh, with its words inked in blood. It's filled to the brim with spells, spells used to summon ancient monsters, raise the dead, and do things that seem pretty obviously impossible. The biggest issue with the Necronomicon, if the stories are to be believed, is that it causes whoever uses it to go completely insane. In some cases, it will even kill whoever reads it. The tales as we know them claim the author of the Necronomicon was Abdul Al-Azred, also known as the Mad Arab. It's reported to be over 1,000 pages long, and yet not a single copy legitimately exists. This is probably because the Necronomicon doesn't exist. As much as we all would love to believe in a book that can summon monsters from other dimensions, it doesn't seem to be real. The Necronomicon was a product of author H.P. Lovecraft, who claimed he got the idea in a dream. He first mentioned it in his 1924 short story, The Hound, then continued to reference his imagined demon summoning book in one story after the other. It was never actually based on any real Book of the Dead, but rather on Lovecraft's own idea that the things we don't understand are far more terrifying than the things we do. Number 6. The Wonderful Discovery of Witches in the County of Lancaster If you've ever wanted to know just how serious witch trials were back in the 1600s, a book called The Wonderful Discovery of Witches in the County of Lancaster is right up your alley. This forbidden book details witch trials that took place between August 18th and 19th, 1612. Today, these events are known as the Lancashire Witch Trials. Out of the 20 men and women who were accused of being witches, 11 were found guilty and hanged. One of them was sentenced to stand in the pillory, while the rest were acquitted on the charges. And for those who don't know what a pillory is, or rather was, seeing as we don't use them anymore, it was a device erected on a post with holes for a person's head and hands. It was a kind of public humiliation. The person was made to stand on a podium with their head and hands stuck in a wooden block. While they were stuck there, the townspeople threw insults at them and even physically abused them. The reason this book exists at all is because the clerk at the trials, Thomas Potts, was ordered by the judge to write a full account of the proceedings. This made them the best recorded witch trials in the 17th century. The account was even submitted to the judges, who then tinkered and corrected the manuscript before publishing it in the form of a book. The historian Stephen Pumphrey has suggested that the judges manipulated the story told by the clerk to both protect and advance their careers, reforming what was literally a witch hunt into a legitimate trial. Number 5. The Wonders of Creation an early Persian manuscript on magic and astrology is currently being held inside Princeton's Department of Rare Books and Special Collections. It's called The Wonders of Creation, and it's a fully illustrated manuscript that includes spells, incantations, and talismans. What's truly fascinating about this forbidden book is that included are 56 painted pictures of both demons and angels. The book goes into great detail about the 72 main demons associated with the zodiac signs. While the zodiac may be popular today in a more innocent kind of way, in the past the zodiac was regarded as something significantly more evil. Zodiac demons were supposed to be beasts that cast spells and incantations to harm humans. The book even goes into detail about which ailments are caused by which demons and how to exercise each specific one. For example, if a person wasn't feeling well, they were almost certainly possessed by a demon. The book shows instructions for sorcerers to take a handful of soil from underneath the feet of the person possessed, then to repeat an incantation seven times that goes something like this. God of heaven and earth, hurry, bring back the love for virtue. And by completing the spell, the person was supposed to get better, and the demon was supposed to leave. And when it comes to a lot of these ancient forbidden books, these are the types of spells we're talking about. They seem a bit silly now, but this was how people dealt with their problems hundreds of years ago. If you could get your hands on this forbidden book, would you try out some of the spells? Let me know your thoughts on ancient mysticism and witchcraft in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more videos coming up. Number 4. The Picatrix the Picatrix is a manual on how to construct talismans, 
how to properly mix magical compounds, and how to summon different spirits depending on the astrological conditions. This book also happens to be the cornerstone of what we view as Western esotericism today. It details magical ideas all the way from antiquity to the modern era. Its original text was compiled completely in Arabic, with the information taken from over 200 sources near the end of the 13th century. Afterwards, the manuscript was translated into Castilian Spanish, then Latin, and finally into English. But Picatrix is more than just spells. It's a full breakdown of medieval magic, as well as philosophy, medicine, and science. Modern translations of Picatrix have turned it almost into a history book on astral magic, practical magic, and very real rituals that can even be done today. In truth, there is nothing inherently evil about the spells and rituals in the book. It's more of a guide to folk magic and traditional healing, and for these reasons it was widely forbidden for centuries after its initial release. Number 3. Maleus Maleficarum In the year 1486, the clergyman Heinrich Kramer published the most popular medieval text about witchcraft, the Maleus Maleficarum. It wasn't received very well at first, and in fact the author ended up getting chased out of Austria. After his book was published, he tried to start his own witch hunt in the town of Innsbruck and was kicked out by the local bishop. But what was done was done. His book was in circulation, and seeing as it discussed some pretty horrendous things about witches and satanic worship, it spread fear throughout Europe all the way until the 15th century. The book was kind of like the soil for the new idea of violent malevolent witches consorting with the devil to take root, because before this, satanic witchcraft wasn't really a thing. Sure, people in Europe believed in witches even before the Romans were around, but in the Middle Ages, people didn't really care that much about them. They believed in monsters, fairies, and magic, but they didn't spend their days terrified of witches. There is even a church document written in the 10th century that suggested witchcraft could be real, but it also said that there wasn't much chance that groups of witches were flying around at night causing chaos. Things started to change in the 12th and 13th centuries. European writers started telling stories about witches. They were saying that they summoned demons, they had blood orgies, and they murdered babies, and that they ate human flesh. The stories spread and started to cause chaos, and then the clergyman Heinrich Kramer's book really helped the notion to take off. By the 15th century, witch hunts were prevalent in Europe. About 50,000 people in total were executed for practicing witchcraft before the Salem witch trials in New England put an end to it once and for all. Number 2. The Book of Soiga The Book of Soiga is a 16th century manuscript on demonology that was written in Latin. But the reason it's so mysterious is that we have no idea who actually wrote the book. All we know is that a man named John Dee, who had been an English mathematician and astronomer, as well as the advisor to Elizabeth I, allegedly acquired the book in the 1580s. He then spent the rest of his life trying to decipher its strange secrets. John was fascinated with the book. It details spells, magical formulas that he couldn't understand, and the different hierarchies of angels and demons. But by the time he died, he still hadn't finished deciphering the final 36 pages. These pages contain tables of random Latin letters that he took to be a coded message. He never could figure it out though, and after his death, things started to get really weird. A close friend of John's, Edward Kelly, claimed that he used the book to summon the archangel Uriel, who then informed him that the book wasn't actually written by anyone, but came into existence when Adam entered paradise. He said the only person who could decipher the book would be the archangel Michael, but the angel never did reveal the secrets of the book to humanity. The book vanished in the late 1610s. But wait, because this story gets even crazier. The Book of Soiga was discovered 400 years later, hiding amongst piles of dusty ancient books deep in the British Library. The cryptographer, Jim Reads, was the first one who actually managed to break the code in the back of the book in 2006. The code turned out to be a list of astrological terms and magical spells, as well as more names of demons and angels. But even though he was able to read the last 36 pages, many people believe he didn't interpret what he read correctly. 
Otherwise, he would allegedly be able to do real magic. Number 1. The Grand Grimoire of Cthulhu The Grand Grimoire of Cthulhu is a modern spellbook for the 21st century. It's filled with over 550 spells that are said to give their wielder unlimited power. The book is also packed with advice and guidance. The items needed to cast spells, different magical components, and details about astronomical situations. The book discusses folk magic, ley lines, and so much more. It's also a guidebook for a tabletop game kind of like Dungeons and Dragons. So don't get your hopes up too high that any of these spells will work in real life. Thanks for watching! Would you like to try to summon demons or cast spells with one of these ancient books? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for more amazing videos. See you later. Bye.